Hi, welcome to WebPixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon. I'm the editor of WebPixel, and I'm joined um, by Alex Mustard, um, our regular contributor. Hi, Alex. Hi, Adam. Uh, nice to see you. Your your T-shirt's looking very bling. Yeah, no, I'm in a disco here. <laughs> actually, um, it's actually out of focus surface water um, in the Red Sea. Oh, is it? it? I would, kind of, all right, okay. I wouldn't have got that. I wasn't what I was so, expecting. Yeah, so it, it's kind of like you know evening sunlight that you normally shoot with yeah. wide angle. Yeah. Shot with a macro lens, but with the focus locked very close to the camera, so the it, it blows yeah. out into this lovely pattern behind. Fantastic, yeah. Well, it is lovely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, which Probably won't of, ever get seen except as a background. But. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a very good background. Um, so, um, which brings me neatly onto the subject, um, which is really one of the topics that that comes up quite frequently on the WebPixel forums, um, is um, which images should you share? online you know which of your image libraries should you should you invite people to, to see online um and so well alex there we are which which images do you share which which ones do you choose um, well I, I guess i'd start by saying you know there's little point in taking underwater photos if you're not going to share them i think you mm. know it can bring you a great deal of pleasure it can bring pleasure and interest and engagement to to lots of other people and I think we're very lucky to live in an age where it is so easy to share images. Indeed. You know, you only have to cast your eye back, you know, your mind back a couple of decades. Yeah. And it was almost impossible as an underwater photographer for anyone to ever see your pictures unless they came to a slideshow or you did a book or you were published in magazines. Yeah. So I think we, you know, first of all, we should all be very grateful that, you know, we're very lucky and we do live in this sort of, you know, demo, you know public democracy of, being, a, you know, that, you know, it's everyone's got a chance to have a voice and share their, their creative endeavors. So yeah. I think that's that's a great side of it. it is. I yeah. think you one rule that I, I would always say to photographers is that less is always more. You know, you're only as good as the last images that you, you shared. Yeah. And perhaps more importantly, if you show someone say, you know, you've got in, in 100 images, you've got five or six really excellent ones, and the rest are just very good. If you show people the full 100 images, they'll think you're a very good photographer. If you show people the five or six really excellent ones, they'll think you are a truly excellent photographer. Yeah. So make sure you edit your work um, well when you when you share online, if yeah. you want people to think you're an excellent photographer, that is. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the question that comes to me a lot is, is around, around contests particularly. And I think I get this question asked to me, you know, I'm planning on entering these pictures in a contest. Should I share them online? The first, what I would say is, you know, never, ever worry about that from a contest point of view. Um, I, I have to say, personally, there's nothing better than winning big in a major competition with a photo that no one has ever seen before. It's kind of it makes people think, wow, what else has that photographer got up their sleeves that we've never seen? Um, but if you look at all the competitions out there and the number of pictures that spam their way through contest after contest from other competitions, then worrying about showing them on social media and thinking it's going to affect their chances is silly because a lot of the winners in a lot of the competitions have already been in five or six contests before yeah, that. True. And yeah, that yeah. makes no difference. And they're seen by far more people than, than your social media feed. And you'd assume that the, you know, the judge... The, the pool of judges in, in generally in, uh, in imaging competitions is relatively small. So, so you'd assume if they haven't seen them, then then it's probably probably likely that, the, that, that in general people haven't. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. well, I, I think actually there's a couple of points on that is that first of all, a lot of the, the judges across the sort of competitions that um, underwater photographers enter, mm. which is both underwater competitions and sort of nature competitions, mm. um, well, a lot of the, the older ones involved in that, and you typically, you know, ask the more experienced photographers to judge. Mm. They're not as socially media engaged as, as the perhaps the, the people who are at the stage of their career where they're very actively entering. So the contest entrants have seen everything 100 times, and they're like, oh, my God, it's those same pictures again. But actually, a lot of the judges are like, wow, we've never seen that picture before. And you'd be surprised how many judge. I mean, in my experience of sitting on judging panels of major competitions, You'll have photographer judges who know everything and have seen all the recent results of other competitions and know everything. And you'll have some maybe, um, you know, older people who are less engaged in the world who are, you know, there to, you know, to provide their opinion. And they'll know much less. And I think both are valuable on the judging panel. 
but you might be surprised how a really famous image will be unknown to a judge you'd think, how can they possibly have never seen that image before? Yep, yeah, yeah. So, yep. Yep. Um, I think one of the, one of the things that when we when we're sharing images as well is we we you know the the types of images that we would share will vary depending on on who we're trying to share them with, um, and obviously mm -hmm. the the contest um, circuit if we can call it that is one area that would definitely attract a certain type of image. But equally, you know, general sharing on social media, for example, once we you know that would be a different type of image, um, and then obviously then possibly using for illustrations in lectures, talks, and um, technique articles, whatever it may be, would be a third type of image. So, so you know, there's no doubt that, that we want to be, when we're shooting images, we probably want to shoot a variety of images, which then give us a, a bunch of different potential outlets for that imagery. Um, you You're know. definitely right that if you want to teach or, you know, either through lecturing or through writing articles, having more than just the glory shots is mm. really appreciated mm. by the audience. Mm. And yeah, so I think, yeah, that's, that's a very T good, very good point. Taking the time to actually show the setup yeah. as, as opposed to just the result. Um, mm. it, it, and I think that's something we, as photographers, we often get focused, <laughs> excuse the pun, mm. on, on the result. Um, and, and, you know, we should actually, if we, if we treat it as a more documentary process, um, we can often use that imagery in all sorts of other ways as well, which is useful. Mm. Um, um, yeah, I, I think there's a few types of images that we shouldn't be sharing, which I think is probably part of this conversation. Indeed. Um, first, pictures that aren't yours, and I, I know, you know, I know it's it's to a lot of times it just seems unbelievable, but it happens, you know, so regularly yeah. that you know someone will come along and claim to be the originator of pictures that aren't theirs. Um, and it happens, you know, all the time on social media. It happens all the time in forums, on on groups and things that people will be posting pictures. Now, you know, I have no problem with someone who wants to have an Instagram account sharing their favorite photos they've seen from other people, and they, you know, they they tag the photographer and say, "Look at this! Isn't this phenomenal?" You know, in, Instagram is full of accounts like that, and I follow yep. some, and they're great. It's a great way yep. to see a curated collection. Yep. Um, but you know, the right ones of those are giving credit to all the photographers. You know, usually messaging the photographers beforehand, please, can I share your image? You know, thumbs up, no problem. You know, all cool. But yeah, there's some, um, yeah, the people that sort of, you know, and, and we even had in, I remember in one of the early wet pixel competitions, we had a guy who took a photo of a photo on a wall. Yeah. It was, you know, I think it was, it, was, it, was, it might have been, um, you know, it was a, a tiger shark eating a reef shark at a, a shark feed. Yeah. And, it was a you know a blue shot, and he took the photo of the photo hanging on the wall, converted it. it to black and white, and entered the picture. Yeah, I remember. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, won't, I won't furnish the story with any names, but you know no. that was in a competition. So yeah, you shouldn't be sharing pictures that you didn't take yourself um, underwater. And I think so, another thing we shouldn't be sharing um, is mm -hmm. is is sharing images that obviously show anything dubious environmentally. And I think we need to be a little bit responsible here as, as underwater photographers in that even if we haven't done something dubious um you know some images could have been the result of dubious behavior we need to be very wary of that um, i think a little bit of knowledge about the subjects that we shoot um and a little bit of knowledge about their behaviors and making sure that we select images that are above reproach that's the point you you know you can be accused of stuff people may think you've done stuff even if you haven't um, and that's, yeah. that's we, we never ever want to be in that, that situation. Yeah, I dress that up to photographers in a slightly different way in that I don't think, you know, if you're sharing pictures online, hoping it's going to enhance your reputation, yeah. you should think very carefully about what reputation you want. Yeah. And if you are hoping that those pictures are going to inspire people, yeah. you don't want to inspire people to take ethically dubious pictures. So even if your picture was taken completely naturally, you might want to think carefully about sharing that online because other people wanting to emulate that might realize that very quickly. You know, for example, if you manage to get a picture of a frogfish swimming um, and, you know, frogfish climb up on top of coral heads, giant frogfish, and when they get off there, they are going to swim a little bit through blue water. And if you happen to be there when the frogfish swam in front of the sunball yeah. and you got an amazing frogfish on a sunball type shot, yeah. If you shared that online, the majority of people would think that you lifted the frogfish up. Yep. And the people that loved that picture and wanted to emulate it would all do it by lifting the frogfish up. Yep. So it's a picture that you probably would think carefully about sharing. 
Yeah, so so you have to be aware of the fact that your images have an effect beyond themselves, and people will often try and emulate or or copy the result of your image. And it's even kind of what we're all hoping, I guess, when we share them, is that we yeah. want our audience to be impressed by yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, but we need, we need to be aware of the fact that you know if 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 it encourages people to behave in, in ethically dubious ways, that's a problem. And then, and you know, octopus in the water column is is obviously a potential another example. Um, you know, I, I'm quite sure octopus is swimming to the water column sometimes. We all know this. Um, that that's definitely the case. But then equally, we can capture the similar images by picking up and dropping them. And that's, a, you know, that's the problem, isn't it? Um, mm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think, you know, obviously we need to be aware of, of the, that when we share images, we do it in a way that, that inspires people to behave in a good way rather than rather than mm. gives them the option of behaving in, in a bad way. Um, yeah. I think the final thing I would say about it is it should be a fun process. Yes. And I think too many photographers are way too caught up thinking, well, if I crop it like this, it will get more likes or I, you know, I'm, I've got to post this time every day because the Instagram algorithm or the Twitter algorithm will like yeah. that. Or, yeah. uh, you know, if it, it, you know, okay. Okay. If, if you find that fun, great. But you know, if you've got something to share, enjoy sharing it. If you haven't got something to share, don't feel that, oh, I must be sharing something today. I must be making a point about, 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 you know, sharing them, you know. So I find when I, you know, so I often share quite a lot through Christmas and things like that, simply because um, I'm not working and I've got time to share pictures when I'm busy. Um, I tend, my, my sharing tends to go down. So, you know, don't, you know, I'm not someone, you know, I'm always moaning, I'm always complaining on here that I'm not very regular posting on Instagram. And I know that's not the right thing to do if you want a good Instagram following, but I, share pictures when I've got the time to share them. And I do it because I enjoy sharing them. I enjoy yep. seeing people enjoying them. Yep. I enjoy generating discussion or showing people things they haven't seen before. Yep. I don't try and pick pictures that I think that will, you know, cream me off loads of, 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 of interaction. I, you know, I just share what I want to share. And I think that for me is, is the way to a healthy and, and happy um, existence online in terms of sharing stuff. Yeah, and I think I think that that you know, depending on on what you want out of image sharing, to some extent, you know, it is an opportunity to establish a brand, a personality, you know, an individual presence online. Um, and and you know, if you get too clever about it, and that and that's the wrong way. If you get too involved with the process of sharing, as opposed to just this is a nice image, I want people to see it. Um, you know, I think that's, I think that ultimately is a really good motivation. I, I'm always really saddened by, and it, it, it's less the case now, by photographers who have a wonderful body of work, but refuse to share it online because they're afraid that, that it'll get stolen or whatever. You know, the, I, th I think it's a, you know, it, it seems a great shame. There's all this beauty and, and, and wonderful imagery that no one ever gets to see. I think that's a, that's a sad state of affairs, really. Um, I'm checking my Instagram handle so I get it right today. Oh, okay. You, I you thought you were, me what I, it is. I thought I'd spurred you into posting there. <laughs> no, 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 no. All right. Wonderful. So, Alex, yes, go on in. You've checked. What is yeah, it? So you can see more of my pictures. <laughs> Alex Mustard One on Instagram. That's the last one I posted uh, as of today. Um, there we go. And, and um, I should. Alex, it's, I don't normally do this, but I should also point out that WetPixel has an Instagram account, which is WetPixelGram as it sounds, mm -hmm. um, and, um, and we quite often share um, stuff of interest on there as well as imagery and everything else. So, so you know, if you're not following, please get on, on to, if you're an Instagram person, mm -hmm. um, jump on, uh, obviously follow Alex and follow WetPixelGram as well. Um, Alex Mustard One and WetPixelGram um, are good places to, to check, out, check out imagery that's being shared. So, um, thanks to our sponsor for this episode, which was um, City Bags Underwater. Um, thank you all for watching. I hope it's proved interesting. If it has, please feel free to drop us a like. Um, and obviously, if you have any comments about the imagery that you share online, um, please um, put them in the, in the comment section below or over on the Wet Pixel forums. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again soon.